There are four objectives of this example. They are multi-threading, which is executing more than one thread at a time, interrupts, which is a hardware-directed software action, profiling, which allows us to see what and when our program is executing, and an oscilloscope, which is a hardware tool used for debugging. Let's begin. The system has two independent functions. The first function will be to find and record prime numbers. There's no particular time constraint on this first function. However, the second function is real time. Its purpose is to create this waveform such that every one millisecond a pulse is created on this output, which goes low, high, and low again. This pulse is to be repeated every 1.024 milliseconds. In this system, we'll design the two tasks independently because they are independent tasks. The first task is a foreground task, which will be executed by the thread called main, and it begins with this entry point. The main thread will find prime numbers, so we'll begin with the integer 2, and n will be the numbers that we will search for. The idea of the foreground thread will be to test to see whether the integer n is prime, and if it is prime, we'll record it. You can see the overall structure of this foreground thread is typical of an embedded system, such that it has one initialization task here, which is executed once at the beginning. Then it has a body, which is this while loop, which will execute over and over again forever. The first part of the task will be to factor the integer n. And that will be done by a subroutine called factor. So we'll pass in the number n, and it will return a factors of that n. If the factors include 1 and n, then the number is prime, and we will record it with a second subroutine called record. However, if the factor of n includes multiple terms in addition to 1 and n, it is not prime, and we will not record it. Again, this is the foreground loop, which will search for and record all the prime numbers. This foreground thread is independent of a second thread called the background thread. In order to create the real-time output, which occurs at every 1.024 milliseconds, we are going to use an interrupt, which is a hardware-driven software action created by the clock. And so every 1.024 milliseconds, the clock will trigger, and this interrupt service routine will execute. And what this interrupt service routine will do is set the output to 1, causing the output to go high right here, wait a little while, set the output to zero, and then the output goes low. The end of the interrupt service routine is a return, which will return back to the main program. So the idea of an interrupt is the foreground thread is running, but when the hardware clock triggers every 1.024 milliseconds, this thread is suspended while the interrupt service routine, or the background thread, is executed. And when the background thread is done, there is a return from interrupt instruction, which will restore the execution back to the foreground. Interrupts are an important part of an embedded system in order to create this real-time behavior. In order to understand the execution pattern of this system, we will create a profile. Different from the last time, this profile will have two components, what the foreground is doing and what the background is doing. The system begins with the foreground and executes the main. The letter A here signifies that this step in the main program, A, is executed. The next thing that happens is the foreground will execute its step B. Again, we have the position of the software being executed, which is B, and the number which is being processed, which is the 2. At this point, the output on PT0 is low, and we'll illustrate that with this line here. The profile continues with the main program executing step C, recording the prime number 2, executing step D, uh, incrementing the n from 2 to 3, and looping through again, looking at prime number 
3, which is a B3, recording the 3, which is a C3, and going to the next step, D3. The next time through the loop, then the number n is 4, and 4 is not prime, and so it will not be recorded. So we have a B4 and a D4. The fundamental concept of an interrupt is we don't know exactly when and where within the foreground thread will the background be triggered. In this case, at the end of the step D4, it just happens that the clock will trigger. We will signify that the background thread has been triggered with this less than sign. Notice that while the interrupt is being processed, the foreground thread is halted or suspended. The first action of the interrupt service routine will be to set port T bit 0 high, which is step E. This is signified in the profile with the letter E and shows up on the signal as PT0 going from a 0 to 1. And again, we've signified that with the letter E. The next thing that will happen is the software will set PT0 equal to 0. And this will cause the signal to go from a high to a low. And we will signify that in our profile as the letter F. Again, notice that the foreground thread is suspended and not being executed while I'm running the interrupt service routine. When the tasks of the interrupt service routine are done, it will execute a return from interrupt instruction. It's signified here in the profile with the greater than sign. The action of the return from interrupt instruction will be to restore the execution back into the foreground, right where it was suspended. In this case, it had just calculated D, and so it will begin execution after the D. We see that the next thing to execute will be the foreground thread through its loop with the n equals 5. This foreground will continue to execute with the number n equals 5. And now it is time for another interrupt. The interrupt is signified by a less than sign. And again, the clock is set up so that these interrupts occur exactly 1.024 milliseconds apart. The interrupt service routine will again set PTT equal to a 1, making this pin go high. Then it will set PTT equal to 0, making the pin go low. Again, we have another pulse of the same width that occurred exactly 1.024 milliseconds from the last one. At the end of this interrupt service routine, control is passed back to the foreground thread to where it was at the time of the interrupt, which in this case was executing record it letter C. And when the foreground thread resumes, it executes the next step after C, which is D. Again, we do not know where in the foreground the interrupt will occur, but we do know when it will occur, and that's exactly 1.024 milliseconds apart. So in summary, interrupts are a software action, which in this case is steps E and F, causing the output to go from a low to a high to a low again, creating the pulse, triggered by a hardware event, in this case the clock, which is set up to trigger every 1.024 milliseconds apart. The profile here, the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, tell us where the program is being executed. The sequence tells us when, and the number tells us the data being processed at that time. An oscilloscope is a hardware debugging tool allowing us to visualize the time sequence of the output or input signals of a microcontroller. In this case, the scope will plot the digital level in the y-axis, which can in this case be a 0 or a 1, versus time in the x-axis. And in this way, we can visually see the execution pattern of our software and guarantee that the pulse does indeed occur every 1.024 milliseconds. So, in summary, we have seen four things. The thread is the action of the program being executed. And in this case, we have two threads the foreground thread finding and recording prime numbers, and the background thread creating the pulse. Interrupt is a hardware mechanism which triggers the software action. The profile is a way to visualize the time sequence of when and what our software is doing. And the oscilloscope is a hardware tool allowing us to visualize the signals on our microcontroller. Thank you very much.